Yes, uh, good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Um, and also to our visitors, good afternoon. And we're so glad that you came here. Kung may mga visitor po tayo. And for the second time, uh, welcome back to FECC. So, um, I will just ask this question again. Uh, last uh, Friday, uh, we he heard a lot of the, from, the, from our pastor yung, uh, about having hope, hope in the Lord. So, um, yung mga puso ba natin ngayon ay full of joy, full of hope and peace, and uh, despite the circumstances that we face every day. And even though, kung hindi man tayo, nawawalan man tayo ng hope or trust from the Lord, uh, the Apostle Paul encourages us in Romans 15.13, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So yung hope ba natin ay nanggagaling sa ating mga sarili, our achievements, from people na, na, na nasa position, or our hope is the only, our only source of hope is the Lord. And this is our prayer tonight, um, to this, uh, at this moment, as we pray this same prayer, uh, prayer from this uh, book of Psalm. Sinabi ni David, My soul, wait upon God and silently submit to Him. For my hope and expectation are from Him. He is only my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, my fortress, and I shall not be moved. Thank you, O God, for this promise, Panginoon. And we stand firm, Panginoon, na ng aming pag-asa, Lord, hindi sa mundong ito, but to you alone. And at this moment, we want to declare, O God, your power, your power in our lives, Panginoon, how you have changed us, how you have you transformed us to be like you. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, church, I'll invite every one of you to stand up and let's declare, let's praise the Lord, let's put our hope, our confidence in Him. And let this be the prayer of our heart. Come on, church, can we raise our hands to praise God? Can you start now? <laughs> This is my prayer in the desert When all that's within me feels dry This is my prayer in my hunger and need My God is the God who provides This is my prayer in the fire In weakness or trial or pain There is a faithful more, more worth than gold so refine me, Lord, to the flames. I will bring praise, I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare. God is my victory and He is me.
Jesus, we will not be moved, we will not be shaken, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for this promise, oh God, and the hope that's from you alone. Let's worship the Lord. Oh uh-huh. 
Jesus, Lord Jesus, our God. We thank you for that comfort, oh God, that promise, oh God, that saying to us, my child, be still, I'm your father, and I'm your God. And we just rely on that, we just stand on that promise, oh God. the door, the king of kings.
Praise God, praise, praise the Lord, praise, praise the Lord, praise, praise, okay. Praise the Lord, praise, praise, praise the Lord, praise, okay. Praise God, praise, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord, okay, praise, praise the Lord. A blessed good afternoon for everyone. Pakibati po muna yung katabi niyo. Magandang hapon, kapatid. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for this afternoon that He has given us again an opportunity for us to be together in worshiping Him as a family. And we thank you for coming. So we are happy to see you, lalo na po yung mga bihira natin makita and we just came back sa, sa ating bansa, galing sa Pilipinas. So we just are happy, happy to see you this afternoon. So can I just lead you in a prayer right now before we start studying God's Word? Father, we are always overwhelmed by your presence in our midst because in fact, this is what makes our gathering special, O oh God. Your very presence dwelling in the midst of your people. And so we humble ourselves before you right now and once more surrendering ourselves to you, knowing that it is our responsible worship to you, God. And so we ask that you continue to consecrate our lives. Let this be a living sacrifice to you that you will be honored as we worship you, even as we listen to your word. We ask right now that you're going to teach us with your word, through your spirit, who will speak to us. 
And we just thank you for this time, O oh Lord. We commit this now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's always interesting to see some unique things and some creative things that people do uh, in life. Isa sa mga nakakatuwang pagmasdan ay kung paano napaka-creative natin mga tao. Uh, uh, just to enjoy this life. Uh, yung iba nga, di ba? Uh, even in death, they can still have, have some fun. Okay? That's why when I look at a sort of uh, literature and so different uh, humorous tombstone inscriptions, medyo natuwa po ako dun sa mga nakasulat dun sa mga lapida. Uh, this was actually taken from a, a writing na napagandang pagmasdan. And it shows how creative we are and how we enjoy even our death. Okay, so let me show this to you one by one. The first thing that I saw is actually coming from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, USA. I, I think this person who died is actually a driver. Okay? Pansinin po natin. Yan. Here lies the body of Jonathan Blake who stepped on the gas instead of the brake. So alam nyo na kung paano siya namatay. Di ba? Nagkamali siya kung anong inapakan niya. Hindi yung brake kundi yung gas. Nakalagay ho yan sa mismong lapida mga kapatid. This is a real, real epitaph dun sa kanyang tombstone. Another one is from England, Riversport. Okay? Ito naman ho'y isang lalaki na makata. A poet. And, and maybe, medyo, he was struggling so much sa kanyang marriage relationship and about his wife. So, he put this on his tombstone. Okay? Nakalagay dyan, Brian Wallace. The children of Israel wanted bread and the Lord sent them manna. Old man Wallace wanted a wife and the devil sent him Anna. So alam niyo na kung bakit nagdusa siya ng gusto dahil so nakita niya asawa niya. Alright? Another one is from England. Okay? This one is maybe a musician. So nilagay niya sa kanyang lapida. On the 22nd of June, Jonathan Fidel went out of tune. Musician kasi. No? Nakakatuwa. But this, the last one, is what made me think, and that is related to our message this afternoon. In Maryland, USA, it says, Here lies an atheist, all dressed up, but no place to go. O nga naman, ano? Isang taong di naniniwala sa Diyos, sa kanyang libingan, is still well-groomed, well-dressed, and yet, wala naman siyang pupuntahan patutunguhan. And I saw this and this made me interested because it's a fact, mga kapatid, that people who don't believe in God have no hope at all. And that's what Job said, again, in chapter 8, verse 13, he said, those who forget God have no hope. Ang mga taong nakalimot sa Diyos at di kumikilala sa Diyos ay walang pag-asa sa buhay. We see the truth of this statement literally in our life today. Isang katotohanan na makikita natin yan. The further we get away from God, the less hope we have. Habang lumalayo ka sa Diyos, lalong ang tao'y nawawala ng pag-asa. Okay? But the closer you get to God, the more you hope you're gonna have in this life. Habang lumalapit ka naman sa Panginoon, mas lalong lumalalim at lumalaki, lumalaki ang iyong pag-asa sa buhay. In the same way, the most hopeless people are those who live far away from God. Ang taong walang pag-asa, kadalasan ay mga taong nabubuhay ng hiwalay sa Diyos. But the most hopeful people who live in this world are those who live closest to God. Because this statement is true, that those who forget God have no hope. But those who live closer to God are those who find hope. You know why? Because God is a God of hope. Again, in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it was quoted to us before we sang this afternoon, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. May the God of hope. Paul 
is actually introducing to us a God who is a God of hope. Ang Diyos na meron tayo ay Diyos ng pag-asa. That's why people who gets closer to God will definitely have more hope in this life. And this afternoon, we're going to talk about God's hope. And I entitled God's message this afternoon, Our Sure Hope. Yung ating pag-asang sigurado. Okay? We just have two verses to study this afternoon. It's found in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. And I'll be requesting everyone to please rise in honor of God in reading His Word. Okay? We'll be reading this all together. And let's read this loud with conviction. Ready? Begin. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Mga puputay lahat, praise be to God in the reading of His Word. Tatlong bagay po ang na natin mga kapatid. First, we're going to study about the greatness of God's hope and secondly, we're going to talk about the guarantee, our guarantee to God's hope and lastly, our grasp to God's hope. Okay? Tatlong bagay po yan. First, let's go to the greatness of God's hope. Let's see what kind of hope that we have and if it's indeed greater than any kind of hope that people will ever have in this world. Okay? There's a research done about rats kung saan ilalagay sila in a, in a basin of water and they're going to be left swimming in that water and for some time, okay, papabayaan sila. And the researcher is looking whether how long will they survive. A rat that was left behind and uh, above the water without opening up the basin, okay, will just last for some minutes, maybe 8 or 10 minutes. But the, it's interesting because the second experiment that they did is that they tried to put one rat again over the basin of water and then from time to time, they open up the basin trying to give some light to the rat. And you know how long did the rat stay alive? The whole day for more than 24 hours. Why? They found out that as, as you give something as a light, as a sort of hope, for the rat, it keeps on swimming, it, stri it strives to survive. And that's the power of hope, of hope. Now, Paul is giving us a wonderful kind of hope when he said in verse 19, sa ating talata kanina, okay, we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. From the moment uh, ships were built, sa mundong ito mga kapatid, at lumalayag sa, sa, sa karagatan, an anchor na meron siya became a symbol of hope. Okay? Yung tinatawag nating anchor sa Tagalog is angkla. Okay? This has been a symbol of hope for, me, for many sailor, sailors. As they travel along the seas, marami na pong nailigtas siya. Now, it's interesting that the Apostle Paul compared our hope to an anchor. Okay? Why? Because it's a symbol of hope. An anchor is a symbol of hope. And through, an anchor, through that anchor, we can, be, uh, we can sail in this light safe and secured. For an anchor to be effective, there must be two issues that must be considered. Para mag effective yung isang angkla na ginagamit ng isang bar barko, dalawang bagay po ang dapat na alam nung gumagamit dito. First, how it was made of. Kung paano siya ginawa. Is it strong enough to test or to, to stand the test of pressure of a storm o nung kakapitan ito? Is it made up of good quality? Kailangan alam nung gumawa nito at ang gumagawa nito is they'll be sure that this is indeed an anchor that is quality enough to stand any kind of pressure. Okay? Yun yung unang dapat malaman ng sino mang gumagamit ng angkla. Is it really a durable anchor that can stand um, a pressure, especially in times of storm, if it's being pu uh, pulled down, okay, or brought down do sa kanilang ship. Now, the second thing na dapat alam nung gumagamit nito is that 
It has to be put down on the right location. Kailangan tama rin yung pagbabagsakan mo. Because an anchor will be meaningless kung wala rin lang siyang kakapitan. Amen po ba? Di ba? So, if an anchor is placed just on the sun, okay, wala siyang nakapitan, there, then magiging walang kabuluhan yung ginawang paghahanap ng mga kapitan nung kalang angkla ng barko. That is the, that, that's actually the two things that must be considered for an anchor to be effective. Now, why did Paul compare our hope to an anchor? He said, ulitin lang po natin as we read this passage again, we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. Okay? He described the kind of anchor that we have, the kind of hope that we have. It says, sure. We have a sure anchor. Why? It is grounded on the very promises of God and character of God which is sure to happen. Nakaangkla po yung ating pag-asa sa pangako ng Diyos sa mismong gumawa at nagbigay nito, walang iba kundi ang ating Diyos na hindi kailanman nagbabago. Unlike in the kind of hope that this world offers to us, we've studied that several weeks ago, di ba? Anong uri ng pag-asa meron sa mundong ito at kadalasan ginagamit ng tao? Uh, we call that as our humanistic hope. Okay? The first thing that we've learned from that humanistic hope and the hope that this, that this world has is actually, first and foremost, a wistful thinking. A wistful thinking. Alam natin po yan. How I wish I could win in the lottery. How I wish I could do this. There's no certainty, okay? The probability somehow, maybe 99.9% not to happen. Okay? Because it's just a wishful thinking. Nagwi-wis ka lang. Okay? Walang kasiguruhan. The second kind of hope that the world offers to us is a blind optimism. Okay? That is looking, looking at things positively disregarding the reality. Okay? Kaya tinawag na blind optimism. You're hoping that red, uh, red will be green or green will be red in spite of the reality of the color it says the opposite. That is blind optimism. Kadalasan ginagamit po natin yan, madalas sa mga relationships. Di ba? Umaasa tayo na, yan, kapag may nanliligaw sa isang dalaga. Di ba? Kahit na alam mo nang dapat may takot siya sa Diyos, hindi mabait naman eh. Okay? At natuklasan mo, meron pala siyang mahirap alisin na bisyo. Sasabihin mo, Anyway, I'm hoping magbabago naman siya pag nag, nagpakasal na kami. Diba? That is our hope. Kadalasan yun ang inaasa natin. Siguro naman, pag kinasal na kami, magbabago na siya. Marami yung umasang ganyan, mga kapatid. Pero hindi sila nagbago. Hindi sila nagbago. Okay? That, those are the things that at times we try to consider as hope. In fact, we disregard the reality of what's already existing. Kaya nga, I always give a sort of advices to young people who are always looking for yung alam nyo nang nai-inlove. Kung gusto mo matagpuan talaga yung magiging karapat-dapat mong partner sa buhay, dalawang bagay lang ang titignan mo. You have to understand potential versus pattern. Potential versus pattern. Okay? Di ba kapag medyo tumitingin tayo nung napapapusuan natin, You're looking always for the potential. Siguro mabait siya. Siguro siya yung lalaki na kapag nakasama mo ay talagang itataguyod ka. Okay? We always base our desire from the potential of what we're going to have in the future. Unfortunately, we disregard the pattern. What's the pattern? Kahit ang nakikita mo, hindi naman talaga nagtatrabaho eh. Pero maasa kang, He's going to raise up your family well and good. Na maayos. Di ba? Ladies, you cannot deny the reality of a pattern behavior. If you're just looking up for the potential, potential magi-artista to. Di ba? Pero ang reality, mga kapatid, 
eh hindi naman siya maayos na maging kasama sa buhay o maaaring maayos na makitungo sa iyo. Because you already saw the pattern. Pero ang problema nga, many, many times, we disregard the pattern, we just look at the potential. Kasi ang sarap tignan, nakapagkasama mo siya, nakakbay ka at hawak mo yung kanyang muscle. Di ba? Katabi ka at medyo kinakapa mo yung six packs niya. You always look for the potential. You disregard the pattern. Dapat baligtad. You just look at the pattern because there lies the potential. Kaya marami nagkakamali. Blind optimism. We are trying to be positive in the reality that is existing already, hoping that you'll get something good out of it. Chance? One in a million. One in a million. Bihira po yun, mga kapatid. Okay? That's why the world's hope has no certainty. Ito lang lately, merong tumawag sa akin, Pastor, I need a counseling mag- tungkol sa relasyon namin. Balak na namin magpakasal. Okay? And sabi niya, Pastor, pero nag-aaway kami madalas. Sabi niya sa akin ganun. And so I took some time to talk to them. No? Kasi yung partner niya is nasa Pilipinas and nandito po yung lalaki. So, simple lang sabi ko, when you enter a relationship, dapat dilat na dilat ka. Pag pumasok ka na sa relasyon, doon ka na dapat magpakabulag. You know why? Before you, before you enter the relationship, you should already see whatever that the package is before you. Okay? Pero pagkatapos na kayo magpakasal, you want your relationship to last? Medyo dapat bulagi mo isang mata mo at huwag mo makita kung ano yung nakikita mo. Pero madalas, people are going to a relationship, they went inside blind. And afterwards, they get married, they dumidilat na sila ngayon. Nagugulat sila eh. Ang lalaki pa ng mata. Nagugulat siya, ganito pala to. Ang lakas pala humilik nito. Hindi ko makatulog. Doon ang nagugulat ngayon. Why? It's blind optimism. This is not the kind of hope that, the, the world, that God would like us to have. Some, again, the third thing is ambitious dreams. Ambitious dreams. Minsan nagiging ambisyoso tayo. We thought that we're going to earn a lot when we entered to a business. Kasi malakas na, na ang ganda ng mga pinapakita. Right now, I have a friend who happens to be a doctor, a dentist, who came to Dubai. These are one of my young people back then sa Pilipinas. Bilang ako'y uh, leader ng young people noon and I'm not yet a pastor. And he just conducted a seminar in Dubai about bitcoins. That's the trend today. Di ba? There are a lot of promises. Ang gaganda. Okay. Ang daming gustong, alam natin, pag exciting, gusto laging pumunta. Gusto laging, ba, sino ba naman hindi ay- ay- ayaw, kikita. Lalo na pag pinakitaan ka ng sangkatutak na, na, na pruweba. But they'll never tell you the prerequisite of it. You have to work hard. There's no such thing as earning a lot without working hard. All you have is a hope that you're going to reach, get rich. Di ba? Why? It is lifting you up to be ambitious in life. There's not, nothing wrong about being ambitious, mga kapatid. But the failure to do the prerequisite of that, kadalasan, doon nagkakatalo. That's why our hope at times becomes just an ambitious dreams. But the kind of hope that God would like us to learn is a sure hope. It is certain to happen. Mga kapatid, ang pag-asa na binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon, hindi umaasa tayo na hindi, mangyayari ba siya o hindi. It will definitely happen. He already promised it through His Word. He attested it already, in, even in history. Pinakita niya na. Pinadala niya na ang kanyang anak. So that we can be sure that our hope will indeed come to accomplishment. That's why last week we've learned one of those things. A hope that happened in the life of a person that everything seems to be hopeless. And that is Abraham. 
Against all odds, he believed the promise of God that they are going to have a child and that is going to be the father of many nations. And it happened because it was promised by God and every promise of God will come into fulfillment. It is sure to happen. That's why the good thing about the hope that we have, mga kapatid, it will definitely happen. It is sure. Kaya ang sabi ni Pablo, we have this sure anchor. Sure to happen. You will never be disappointed. Again, Paul repeated that in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. Ito po yung kaibaan ng pag-asa natin, mga kapatid. Ang sabi yan, hope does not disappoint us. Yung pag-asa na meron tayo, kailanman hindi tayo madidisappoint. Pero, another thing that we have learned is that from this passage, it says, it's an anchor that is sure and steadfast. When we talk about being steadfast, we are talking about being strong and secured hope even in times of pressure or storm. Let me show you a picture of an anchor para po lalo nating ma-appreciate. Okay? Our hope is steadfast and this is an anchor. Okay? An anchor is made up of steel. Depending on the size of the ship is the size of the anchor. The bigger the ship, the bigger the anchor. Alright? Yan po yung anchor. But let me show you the chain of the anchor. Okay. That's the chain of the anchor. Can you see that thing in the middle? Tao po yun, mga kapatid. That's a, a, a man. So can you imagine how big the chain is that holds the anchor? According to to that article, it's every chain is 500 pounds. 500 pounds. So, to show you one anchor of a tanker, yung isang cargo ship, is like this. Okay? It says there, if you can read the small note, it's 75 tons. 75 tons. That's just one anchor, mga kapatid. A ship can have many anchors. Okay? Hindi lang po isa. But this anchor of a tanker is weighing 75 tons. You know how much 75 tons is? It's more or less 68,000 kilos. 68,000 kilos. Pag samasamahin nyo na tayo dito, mga kapatid, hindi pa rin natin kaya yung weight ng isang anchor. Why do they need that huge anchor? The bigger the ship, the bigger the anchor. Okay? It must be strong, it must be durable. It will also tell us, okay, as Christians, when Paul was saying we have an anchor that's sure and steadfast, firm and secure, okay, in this life, as Christians, we will be needing a big anchor. Because life as a Christian is somewhat impossible. And if you are striving to live a huge life for God, then you will be needing a big anchor. There will be great storms. The higher the ladder that you're going to ra- rise, or uh, 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 I would say get up, the bigger the problem. That's why you'll be needing, needing a bigger anchor. Pero kung buhay mo'y malit lang, contento ka na doon sa mga malit na bagay, then you just need a small, tiny anchor. Pero bad news mga kapatid, as Christians, we are designed to live a huge life. A life that will be impacting this world. A life that will be influencing this world. A life that will be meaningful and that will shine Christ-likeness. That's why we need a big anchor a sure and steadfast anchor. Kailangan po natin ng isang matibay na angkla sa buhay. Isang pag-asa na kakapitan natin sa panahon na may malaking bagyo tayong harap, harapin sa buhay. And we praise the Lord because God has already provided us for that. 
a big and huge anchor of hope. And then what kind of anchor do you have right now in your life? Anong klase na angkla is your life attached right now? Some anchor, or some put their anchors in, sa kalambuhay sa mga taong inaasahan nila, mga nasa posisyon, mga politiko. And sometimes, it's so sad that even Christians are drawn into this. Marami akong kilalang Krisyano that they were re- they're really willing to die for their favorite politicians. Isang kaklasiko happens to be a Christian is really a diehard Duterte. Talagang, talagang kahit saan siya magpunta, diehard siya. Okay? Be careful, ladies and gentlemen, because yes, we pray, we, we, we we have to support our, our, our president. We have, to, we have to pray for him. But when, in, when, when things like some, some of the issues are not right, we cannot be blind to them. The more that we have to pray for them. Kaya nung sinabi niya, oh, yan ay binoto niyo. Nagsusulong na ng same-sex marriage. And I say directly to the pastor, to the friend, it is definitely wrong. But I'll still pray for the president and I'll still support yung kanyang mga agendang iba. It doesn't mean that one thing is already corrupting everything. No. I'll still support whatever and whoever the Lord puts there. Sabi ko sa kanya. But I'll not be blind to his, to his errors. Do sa kanyang pagkakamali. We cannot put our trust and hope to people, especially those who are in politics. Mga kapatid. Some people are putting their trust in their profession. Yun yung pag-asa nila, hanggat may trabaho ko, hanggat engineer ako, hanggat nurse ako. Pero paano pag dumating hindi ka na ganun? Will you be able to stand still and continue to follow the Lord? Some put their, their anchor in prosperity. Kapag meron ka, kapag sagana. Di ba? Some put their, their anchor in their relationship, in their passionate relationships. How many times has your anchor either broke or just drag you in the bottom of the sandy ocean, unsecured, leaving you disappointed or hurting? Marami na tayong inasahan. Di ba? Pero sabi nga ng Panginoon, yung pag-asa that this world can, will offer to you will one day disappoint you. Sometimes, we are exposed, naked, hurt, hurting, and in pain. Kaya nga marami sa atin, pahugot-hugot na lang eh. Di ba? Marami tayong natututunang hugot lines. Kasi nga, marami tayong inasahan na hindi nangyari sa buhay. Di ba? I don't know, pero I just tried to read some of the hugot lines. At nakakatuwang tignan. It reflects the kind of hope that people have right now. Yung isang sabi niya, dapat ba akong umiti dahil magkaibigan tayo? O dapat ba akong malungkot dahil hanggang dun lang tayo? Alam nyo na kung ano'y naasahan, di ba? Yan yung umaasa ng patago. Kasi pag nalaman niya, oh, wala na. Another one. Paano ko'y paglalaban ng pagmamahal ko sa'yo kung ako lang naman ang nakakaramdam nito? Ang lungkot ng buhay, ano? The person expecting something to love and, and fight for that love, pero ang problema, siya lang naman talaga nagmamahal. Another one, sabi nga nun, si Snow White, kumagat lang ng apple, nakala, nagka-love life na. Ikaw, fruit salad ng kinain mo, wala pa rin. <laughs> Sad, no? <laughs> Di ba? <laughs> Kung ano man, si Snow White, pagkakagat niya, dumating na sa Prince Charming, inalikan siya. Ikaw, panay fruit salad na kinakain mo, wala pa rin. Grabe naman tong hugot na to. Okay? Ang pagibig yan, para sa mga parang si Mayweather, yayakapin ka, sasaktan ka, tapos tatakbuhan ka. Ah, tindi, no? Yan daw yung pag-ibig. Meron pa. Ang daling matulog, ang hirap bumangon. Ang daling mahulog, ang hirap mag-move on. Grabe naman talaga yan. 
Doon sa mga hirap. Ang hirap ng ganyan ang pag-asa sa buhay. No? Safeguard na lang mahalin mo. Iwas sakit pa. <laughs> Para hindi ka na daw masaktan. Safeguard na lang. Okay? Kaya nga, at the end, iwas asa, iwas nga nga. <laughs> you see, there's so much pain that people experience that at times, ang naririn natin, I don't want anymore to expect because if you expect, you will be frustrated and disappointed. You will be hurt and in pain. Kaya yung iba ayaw na talagang umasa, wala na akong inaasahan. Mga kapatid, ang problema nga kasi, mali yung inaasahan mo. God is giving us a sure and steadfast hope. Gusto mo wag ma-prustrate, umasa ka sa sinasabi ng Diyos. Umasa ka sa Diyos mismo. Yun ang gusto matutunan ng Panginoon. If you are hoping that you'll find a partner, ibigay mo muna sa Panginoon. Lumapit ka muna sa Lord. Kasi yung sabi, di ba kanina? Those who forget God have no hope. Lumapit ka sa Diyos, mas lalakas yung pag-asa mo. At ang sabi ng Panginoon, hindi ka niya bibigyan. Because the promise is, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desire of your heart. Amen po ba? Pangawakan mo yun. Sinabi ng Panginoon yun eh. Our hope is indeed sure. Meron pang ang iba eh. Grabe na ito mga kapatid pag uma- sa hugot nila. Kakaiba na. Hindi lang talaga frustrated sila. Sabi nila, Lord, kung di ko po talaga siya para sa akin, pwede mo na siyang kunin. Amen. <laughs> Ayan talaga. Iba na yan. Grabe. Di ba? Hindi nila siya frustrated. Talagang sumum- nanumpa na siya. Lord, patayin mo na siya. Kung pwede lang. Sobrang sakit ano. Why? Because we always put our hope to somebody. That's why when I, when I counsel people, especially those who are getting married, di ba? Iba sa atin, nangangako in sickness or in health, huwag ka masyadong mawak dyan. Alam mo kung bakit? People will fail. People will fail. We're not saying that that should not happen. That is a promise that must be done and accomplished. But what if your partner will fail? Will you still hold on? You see, this is the good news about the promise of the Lord. It is sure it will be accomplished. Kaya pwede kang umasa, pwede ka pa rin humarap, kahit na yung partner mo sa buhay pumalpak. Amen po ba? Hello? Marami atang nasasaktan. Let's go to the second point. Our guarantee to God's hope. Our guarantee to God's hope. Anong garantiya na yung ating pag-asa ay mangyayari. Okay? Verse 19, again, the second half, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Um, medyo, hindi ko lang po na pakita, na nakuha yung siguro, you're, you're already aware of the, the tabernacle or the temple that it separated by different doors, okay, or sections. The outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies, the holy place, and the holy of holies. Okay, let me talk to that to you about that later on. Pero gusto ko po ipaliwanag sa inyo mga kapatid that the writer of Hebrews talks about the Lord Jesus Christ and His superiority. Ang summary po na aklat ng Hebreo mga kapatid, pinapakita nito ang Painus of Cristo at yung kanyang superiority. In what? In Hebrews chapter 1, you'll find that the writer was telling us that Jesus is superior than the angels. That angels. Okay? And also, in chapter 3, you'll find, ito mabigat as far as the Jews is concerned. Jesus is superior than Moses. You go to Israel, they honor Moses too much now. Okay? But Jesus is being exhorted to us as superior than Moses. And now in Hebrews chapter 4, up to 7, you'll find that Jesus is superior than any other priest or higher, highest priest that live in this world. Because you know why? He is a priest from the order of Melchizedek. It's a priest 
who offered the sacrifice once and for all. Alam natin, doon sa holy po, doon sa templo, only a higher the high priest can enter what we call the last portion, the holy of holies. Why? It is the place where God resides. And they do it annually. Once a year, the high priest will enter once a year. It can't be repeated only once a year. Many, many times, they have to observe consecration, serious consecration, because a small loopholes, sabihin na natin, malim, maliit na pagkakamali na magawa ng high priest, that would mean death for him because he's going to enter the holy of holies. That's why ang paliwanag ng mga Jews niyan, the priest who will enter the holy police, may tali po sila sa paa. So that when somebody, something happens, doon sa kabila tali, doon sa kabila, kalimbang na maliit. Why? When the, holy, when the high priest enters the holy police and is not worthy, he has something, a sin in his life. Okay. Pagpasok niya doon, tepok siya. Paano lang malalaman? Wala nang kumakalimbang. Wala nang tumutunog. So, hahatakin na nila. That's the purpose that the priest is tied sa kanyang paa. Because they cannot enter the Holy of Holies that easily. But when Jesus came, He is a high priest who entered the Holy of Holies once and for all. How did He do that? Through His own life, through His suffering. That's why when Jesus died at sinabi niya, it is finished. Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. Then he died. Immediately after saying that, the curtain that separated the holy place and the holy of holies was torn down from top to bottom. Why? That shows that now everybody can enter the presence of God. And who made it possible? Our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya po sa atin mga kapatid, wala nang pari. Lahat ng taong merong Kristo sa puso ay pari na. Now they can enter the presence of God. Before, only a priest can enter a temple. But when Jesus died on the cross, that, that piece of cloth, that curtain was broken from top to bottom. That you and I now can enter the presence of God without any mediation at all. You can talk to God you can communicate with God, there's no hindrance at all because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did. He is a high priest. He is our priest in the order of Melchizedek. Now, ang sabi po ng sumulat ng Hebrews, where Jesus, our hope is in that veil. Bakit? sapagkat nandun ang Diyos, doon nakatira ang Diyos, at ang pag-asa nila ay nandun sa Diyos. And Jesus paved the way. That's why our guarantee for this hope, ladies and gentlemen, is the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins and for our lives. Ano nangyari when Jesus died for us and He was given to us? Now, if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, ang sabi, anong hope natin sa Panginoon sa Kristo? First, there is now no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Meaning, hindi ka na paparusahan, hindi ka na pupunta sa impyerno, hindi ka na ikokondem sa iyong kasalanan. Why? Because of what Jesus did on the cross. Secondly, there is no now miscalculation sa buhay mo. Walang pagkakamali. Sabi ng Romans 8.28, Madalas po natin sinasabi yan, We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Mga kapatid, lahat na nangyari sa buhay mo at mangyayari pa, wala nang pangit at masama para sa iyo. Does it mean yung isang sinaktan ka, hindi na masama yun? Pangit yun per se. But, the good thing is that even that bad experience can be used by the Lord for your own good. Yun po yung sinasabi ng Romans 8.28. 
even your bad experiences in the past. Because now you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, now you can look at that past experience, painful it may be, and say, now I know those things are now being used by the Lord for my own good things. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Yun lang may nagmamahal sa Kanya. Yun lang may relasyon sa Kanya. Pero yung taong walang relasyon sa Kanya, yung mangyayaring pangit, pangit talaga yun, wala nang maganda doon. Kasi wala siyang relasyon kay Kristo eh. Walang magbibigay sa Kanya ng kakainan tingnan na yung bagay na yun ay pwedeng gamitin ng Diyos para sa ikabubuti niya. If we're going to look at our lives, ano yung mga pangit na masasabi mong right now as you look at yourself? Kaya pala nangyari sa akin yon para ilapit ako ng Panginoon sa Kanya at matuklasan ko na may magandang future ako sa Kanya. Ano yung pangit niyong naranasan mga kapatid? That really led you to the Lord to come to the Lord and surrender your life to the Lord. Marami sa atin can look back and see those things and say, oh nga, kaya pala hindi ko pinaintulot ng Panginoon na magsarili sa buhay na ito. And just to be humbled by that experience is because He wants me to find a more meaningful life, a better life, which is the life with the Lord Jesus Christ. Iba sa atin, masasakit talaga. You lost something. You lost your wealth. You lost a loved one. But God can use that to work the good things in your life. There is now no condemnation, wala nang miscalculation sa buhay mo mga kapatid. Hindi na nag, walang pagkakamali. Those things can be used for your own gain. Thirdly, there is now no intimidation. Sabi ng Romans 8.31, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Okay? Hindi mo na kinakailang ma-intimidate. Hindi mo na kinakailang matakot. Ano man dumating at sino man taong nasa harapan mo. There will be no intimidation because God is for you. God is with you. Problema, ginagamit lang po yan ng mga tao kadalasan, yung mga nakukulong na mga politiko. If God is for me, who can be against me? Kaya tuloy po mapangit yung talata. Mga kapatid, that passage is for a person who has a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Not for those people who's using that for their own sake. No. There is now no intimidation. There is now no deprivation. He who did not spare His own Son but gave Him up for, his, for us all, will He not also along with Him graciously give us all things? Wala nang hindi pwedeng ibigay sa iyo ang Panginoon kapatid. You just need to know ano at bakit kaya hindi binibigay ng Panginoon until now? Maybe you're not yet ready. Okay? Because some things needs to be withhold to a child so that he will not be distracted and destroyed. Kasi pag binigay ng Panginoon sa'yo, first, baka talikuran mo na siya. Baka makalimutan mo siya. Di ba? The prayer of Agur in Proverbs, Lord, Wag mo po kong pahirapan, pahirapin, baka sumpain kita. Wag mo rin naman akong payamanin ng gusto, baka makalimutan kita. He just want, he's an honest person. He just want a balanced life. Either way, can be disadvantageous to him. Or ladies and gentlemen, God is a God who loves to bless us and to prosper us in the context of His kingdom. Amen po ba? Gusto ng Panginoon na payamanin ka, pagpalain ka, pero para sa kanyang karian upang maging pagpapala ka at maging kagamit-gamit. Apart from that, God will not bless you. That's why He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Every blessing that will come to your life has a purpose as a purpose. Amen po ba? Okay? So, hindi ibig sabihin ayaw ka ng pagpalain ng Panginoon. Gusto kong gusto kong pagpalain ng Lord. But, it should be in the context. 
Lastly, the ultimate blessing, our hope, there is now no separation. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Wala nang makapaghiwalay sa atin sa pag-ibig ng Diyos dahil kay Kristo. Hello. Amen po ba? So talking about security, meron pa bang si-secured sa bagay na yan? If you are in Christ, you are already secured. Pakisabi mo sa katabi mo, secured ka na kapatid. Secured ka na. Okay? This is our hope because of Christ, our guarantee, because He has given the Lord Jesus Christ. Yun yung collateral, mga kapatid. Pag nagsasala ka sa bangko, di ba? Kailangan nila ng collateral na ibig sabihin hindi ka tatakbo. Tuto pa rin yung pinangako mo. The good news is, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God's collateral for all these promises to be accomplished and this hope be fulfilled in our lives. Bakit nga tuto pa rin lahat yan? Binigay niya na si Kristo eh. Ano pa hindi niya ibibigay sa iyo? Kaya nga yung mga mahilig sa atin, nung inabot niyo pa yung pag-ibigan na nagpapadala ng mga cards, eh ngayon, mahirap na eh. Panay chat-chat na lang, text-text na lang eh. Magme-message na lang. Pero nung mga panahon na mga makikisig natin mga kalalakihan nasa likod, mga kapatid, nagpapadala ng mga, mga postcard siya. Diba? At ang gustong-gusto lang padala, yung nakalaga, if you care enough to send the very best, send Hallmark. Diba? Yun ang lagi nilang binibilis. Sa National Bookstore pa yun eh. Di ba? Tapos pari pakitang gano'ng ka-special yung tao. Kasi ang, ang moto, if you care enough to send the very best, send Hallmark. The good news is, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was God's best. He already sent the Lord Jesus Christ because, because He cares for us and there's nothing more that he can, he can withhold. There's nothing more that He will not fulfill in His promises and His hope for each one of us. That's why, very clearly, yan yung hallmark natin. Sabi ng talata, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Mga kapatid, kalimutan nyo na lahat ng sinabi ko, wag lang ito. Sino mang may anak ng Diyos ay may buhay. Yung buhay dyan, hindi buhay na meron tayo dito lang sa lupa. It's an eternal life. At sabi niya, kung wala kang anak ng Diyos sa buhay mo, wala kang buhay. Wala kang buhay. So if there's something that you, would, you should consider right now, ang tanong, do you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? Do you have the Son of God? Because without the Son of God, you don't have life. You don't have a meaningful life. You don't have hope in this world. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God has no life. Minsan, nangakalungkot. Even if they knew already, they can hear the Word of God. Sinasabi na ng talata, mga kapatid, dapat nasa iyo ang anak ng Diyos. Hindi pinag-uusapan dito, anong reliyon mo, anong ginagawa mo, saan ka sumasama. Pinag-uusapan dito, do you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? Pero pinipigilan ka, kahit na sinasabi na ng Banal Espiritu sa iyo, Papasukin mo ang Panginoon sa Kristo. Pagtiwalaan mo ang Panginoon sa Kristo. Tanggapin mo siya. Manampalataya ka. But because you're more concerned about what people will say, you're more concerned about your religion. But it's very clear. Not your religion, not any people, but it's Jesus who will give you life and assurance that no matter what happened, you will be in heaven. So the question again, kapatid, do you have the Son of God in your life? Pwedeng matagal ka nang narito. Pwedeng ang bahagi kang naglilingkod. Pero kung wala si Kristo sa buhay mo, it is meaningless and in vain. Sayang. 
Because the most important thing in life is to have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. If you have the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the hope that we have heard from what we've studied a while ago. No separation, no condemnation, no intimidation, no deprivation. That is our hope in Jesus Christ. Hindi ko kailangan ng reliyon. Ang kailangan ko lang si Kristo. The reason I'm part of a body like this is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It all starts with the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga sabi ng Colossians, or sabi ng isang talata, in Christ, the hopeless find hope. Why? Because Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ang pag-asa natin na kay Kristo. Do you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? You can only have that if you're going to consider the third thing. Our grasp of God's hope. Paano mo makakamit? Paano mo makakapitan yung pag-asa ng Diyos? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Mga kapatid, if there's one thing that you need, just like Abraham, it's faith. Kasi yung sabi ng talata, faith, anong faith? Is being sure. Yung maging sigurado ka sa ano? Sa yung inaasahan and to be certain of what you do not see. Ang pananampalataya ay yung pagiging sigurado ka sa isang bagay na inaasahan mo. Ano yung bagay na inaasahan mo? Kung umaasa ka na may langit na sinabi ng Biblia, sinabi ng Diyos sa atin, panampalatayanan mo at maging sigurado ka because that is faith. Cling on to that and hold on to that because that will enable you to realize God's hope in your life. There was a missionary the first missionary in China is actually Hudson Taylor. One time when he was sailing, it so happened that the ship that he was riding caught a storm. In the middle of that, the captain asked the people to, to consider praying. And he went to Hudson Taylor because he knew that Hudson Taylor is a man of God. So sabi niya, Sir Taylor, can you pray? Because right now, we are in the middle of the storm. And I would like you to see the shore. Tinuro ng kapitan yung shore. Why? Because there are people in the shore, dun sa kabilang, dun sa, sa daong. Sabi ni Hudson Taylor, and who are they? Hudson Taylor, sabi ng kapitan, they are cannibals. Waiting for us, rejoicing, that any time now, if the ship will sink, they will have plenty of food. So sabi niya, kindly pray, Mr. Taylor, that God will remove this storm. And Hudson Taylor said to the captain, I'll do that. But there's one thing that you have to do. You have to lower down the sail. Kung ibababa mo lang yung sail, mananalangin ako. Oh, no, no, sabi ng kapitan. Ano, I, don't, I, don't, I will not do that. I don't want to be a laughing stock to the people. The, 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 I, I, you just need to pray. But Hudson Taylor said, I wouldn't pray. I, oh, I would not pray if you, not, you are not going to lower down the sail. So napilitan po yung kapitan. Binaba niya. After a while, when Hudson Taylor was still praying inside his cabin, there was a knock on the door. Tak tak. And when he opened up, it was the captain. The captain said, "Are you still praying for the storm to come and for the wind to just?" push us away from the shore? Sabi ni Hudson Taylor, yes. Ah, please stop. We have so much wind, we have already far away from the land. You see, when Hudson Taylor asked the captain to lower down the sail, it's an act of faith. You want to receive what you are asking from the Lord and the hope that you would like to experience. You have to have the faith that the Bible is telling us. It is something is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Mga kapatid, in this life, we'll have lots of storms. 
We're just starting the year, 2018. Hindi po ba? I don't know. Each one has different storms, small or big. But definitely those storms may sometimes shake us or sometimes rattle us. And in this life, natuklasan ko, I've been a Christian for four decades now. I was 12, 12 years old when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm and he called me to be a pastor and, and, and for 28 years now I have been full-time the full-time pastor into the ministry. Sang bagay po natuklasan ko, marami pa rin tayong kahinaan, marami pa rin tayong imperfections. There will be times, there are times na I still see myself being provoked, okay? Ng mga wrongdoings and actions na ibang tao. I thought, medyo matured na ako sa bagay na yan. Pero minsan nakikita ko pa rin sarili ko that I'm easily provoked. No? Especially, I, 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 I don't like so much yung mga self-righteous attitude. Yun po yung talagang medyo nagiging burden ko at times. But I find myself na nandun pa rin maraming kainaan. Sometimes, okay, lalo na pag nag-aaway kami ng asawa ko, na parang ayaw na namin magkita, Iwala yan na. Uwi na ako ng Pilipinas. Okay. Minsan gusto ko sabihin, ikaw na magpastor. <laughs> and I have to be honest at times about your, our situation, yung mga, yung mga struggles as, as, as human beings. No? May mga weaknesses pa rin tayo. There will be times, mga kapatid, as human beings, you'll give up. You'll try, you, you, you will come to a point that you're at the end of your rope and say, pagod na ako. Pwede ba makapagpahinga naman? Uh, did it come to your mind to na maisip nyo rin po yun? It's so easy for us to, to withdraw, to give up, and to get back in our old life na yung para bang wala kang iniisip. Di ba? You are still being tempted by Satan and, and at times you, you, you fall into those temptations. What holds you firmly? Alam niyo yung pag-asa natin, ang nag-hold sa atin, pag-asa po natin sa Panginoon sa Kanyang salita. Many, many times, if you think, okay na ako dito, I'll go out, but God will run after you. Hahabulin ka ng Diyos. Hindi ka niya papabayaan, hindi ka niya bibitawan. He will not let you go. You know why? Even if you fail, even if you fall, God will not let you go. Because He promised it in His Word. Pangako ng Panginoon, if we are faithless, He will remain faithful. Even if we are faithless, kahit minsan, bumibigay ka na, God will remain faithful. Amen po ba? What will sustain you throughout the storm? What will sustain you in giving up? It is the fact that God is still in control. He's sovereign. He will not let you go. When you are overwhelmed with situation, God's hope will run after you, will remind you, hold on. You have a sure and steadfast hope. Even then, we are overwhelmed. Kasi ang tao, madali po talaga tayong madiscourage, mawala ng pag-asa, bumigay. When we are focused so much on situations, di ba? We always focus on situations, in circumstances in life. But God will remind you of His promises. To hold on to you, so that you can keep on and be sustained. It's a good promise to know, it's a good situation or, or, or thoughts to be reminded of this. In an overwhelming situation, we need an over, overruling Savior. God is sovereign. Kahit pumapalpak tayo, mananatiling matapat ang Diyos sa atin. Amen po ba? hindi siya nakadepende kung ano yung mga kapalpakan natin, ano yung kahinaan natin. He will keep on loving us. He will keep on running after us and He will not let, it go, let us go. He is sovereign. He will remain faithful to us. I don't know about you, but that's the God that we have. Ito po yung Diyos na meron tayo, mga kapatid. Isang Diyos na hindi nagbabago kahit tayo madalas nagbabago. Isang Diyos na hindi nagbabago kahit madalas tayong pumapalpak. Isang Diyos na hindi nagsasawa 
kahit madalas nagkakasala at nagkakamali. We have a God who's sovereign. We are always caught by God's sovereignty when we are overwhelmed by our situation. Kaya nga, napakasarap. Yung pag-asa natin is not dependent on us. It's not dependent on the things of this world. It is dependent on a God who's unchanging and unfailing in His promises, who's able to sustain you. This year, may mga kapatid tayo who struggled a lot sa kanilang marriage life, but God sustained them. I've shared to you sometime, yung mga couples na nag-struggle, and yet God, I saw them being restored by the Lord. Meron tayong kapatid nag-struggle sa trabaho, sinampa ng kaso ng kanyang amo, and we praise the Lord that this week, there was a breakthrough sa kanyang buhay. I don't know what kind of storm that we're going to face, but one thing is sure, we have a sure hope. That hope is guaranteed because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pwede mo bang pakisabi yung katabi mo? Kapatid, you have a sure hope. You have a sure hope. As we continue to face this year, may that hope lead us to stand firm in our relationship with the Lord. God bless you all. Salamat, Pastor, sa mga salita ng Panginoon na narinig namin ngayong hapon na ito. As we continue, uh, before we give our tithes and offerings to the Lord, uh, the Word of the Lord reminded us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, ang sabi po dito ay, uh, ang bawat isa ay dapat magbigay ayon sa sariling pasya at hindi napipilitan lamang Maluwag sa loob at hindi napipilitan lamang, sapagkat ang ibig ng Diyos ay kusang pagkakaloob. Magagawa ng Diyos na pasaganain kayo sa lahat ng bagay, hindi pa, higit pa sa inyong pangangailangan upang may magamit kayo sa pagkakawang gawa. Let us give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. It's only 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We worship you to the highest, Lord. We give thanks once again, Lord, as we gather. Salamat, Panginoon, sa araw nito, Panginoon, as you gathered our brothers and sisters in this church. We have a lot of things to thank you for your presence, Lord. Salamat, Panginoon, sa faith, sa hope, as you cement this, as you anchor this to this church, as we anchor this to your name, Lord. We give thanks, Lord, once again as we share all of these bounties to your kingdom and to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Salamat, kapatid. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. On behalf of the Filipino Evangelical Christian Church, uh, welcome sa uh, inyong lahat and especially to our first-time visitors uh, today. Meron po tayong... Uh, Dalawang first-time visitors, si Just Angel. Can you please stand? Welcome. Dennis Lopez. Thank you and salamat po sa iyong uh, pagdating ngayong hapon na ito. At uh, meron po tayong mga answers na lalapit sa inyo and uh, we will, uh, they will welcome you further in this church. Uh, serving next week. Ang uh, mag-preside, si Brother Bong Manlubatan, ang ating song leader, Sister Hana Manlubatan. Tithes and offerings, uh, Brother Joey and Sister Anna Akas. Preacher intercessor natin, si Brother Ramil and Sister Joy D. Guzman. Fellowship in charge today, Altuba G. Group and Fellowship in charge next week, ang Khalifa G. Group. Ang ating mga announcement, Once a month prayer and worship celebration every last Monday of the month. It will start on January 29 na po. 7.30 p.m. sa small worship hall. Dito po yun sa, ano, sa gilid ng ating ano. Paglabas natin, may, may isang worship hall dyan. Dyan po tayo. Our church 32nd anniversary on February 23, 2018. So, mga G-Group po, be prepared sa ating mga Uh, ihandog po sa anniversary natin. Wala na po ang announcement po sa? Praise the Lord. So we would like to invite you again, excited po tayo sa ating darating na Monday for our monthly prayer meeting and worship. Actually, this is designed for us to have a midweek service sa mga darating na panahon. But we're starting it once a month. So we'd like you to enjoy it so it will be more of uh, worship and prayer. So please come and invite some friends that will uh, be able to share with us sa ating time ng pagsamba and worship. Uh, we're excited this will be an evening of, uh, worship para sa atin sa FECC. So kindly join us at mag-enjoy po tayo sa presensya ng Panginoon. But today we are also glad na nakabalik na po minsan pa. Okay, yung ating si Kuya Melvin at si Dean. Ananja si Dean. Okay, welcome ulit kay Melvin. And also today yung kanyang birthday. So salamat sa buhay ni Kuya Melvin. Happy, happy birthday. Alright, meron pa ba tayong mga birthday celebrators today? Na hindi lang nakita, maka meron pong nagsiselebrate ng birthday. We'd like to... Okay? Yeah. Malapit na. Si Brother Erwin, 27. Si Sister Princess Banyares nasa Pilipinas. Ayan, pare-pareho. Si Kuya Cesar nasa Pilipinas din po. And si Kuya Ariel on the 31st. And Sister Lizelle. Sorry na. So happy, happy birthday po sa mga celebrate. And after this, we're going to have our uh, fellowship time outside. Enjoy our meal together. 
And please take time to greet one another minsan pa dahil bira lang po tayong magkita. So, again, let's not forget our Monday time of worship. It's a midweek service. Kung galing sa work po kayo, it's 7.30 in the evening. And we hope na meron din tayong konting kape doon para na sa ganun. Ay, medyo hindi tayo lamigin. So, uh, we would like you to come and just enjoy the time with us in worshiping the Lord. So, now, let's uh, end in prayer. Tumayo po tayong lahat. At tayo po'y manalangin. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for once more reminding us, O God, the sure and confident hope that we have in you. That hope that will sustain us in this life, even as we start this year. We hope, O God, that the words that we have received will continually be nourished and cherish in our hearts, O oh God, and be realized in our lives. Let this hope be our guide, O oh God, throughout this year as we pursue standing firm in the Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will sustain us and that you're going to use us to expand your kingdom, even to reach out to more souls, O oh God, our office mates, our co-workers, our loved ones. Lord, as you have promised that you're going to pour out your blessing upon us as we continue to be, uh, allow ourselves to be used by you in extending your kingdom wherever we are, even in our, in our um, office works, Lord. And so we just ask, O oh God, that you'll enable us and give us the courage to continually shine and manifest our faith in a way that people will be attracted and people will see the difference of how it is to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the hope that we have. And this hope will continually be our guide in this life. So we just commit to ourselves, even as we go out from this place, bless us continually, even our fellowship. We thank you and just bring back all the honor praise to you because you alone deserve it. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our victory song. Yes, church, come on. Let's sing our victory song in Jesus' name.
Jesus, amen. 